this is my view for 10 15 minutes or so this is the top end of Ecrin Flash. We're looking over towards the village of Kersal. Loudwood coming down on the left hand side of the screen. If I go 50 yards back up the hill, it's blowing a gale, a northerly gale, so it's cool. Nothing's flying up there. It's a different matter here, though, because it's a Bibio day today. If you're familiar with the countryside and the countryside in a UK spring, you're probably all too familiar with this particular fly. You don't even have to be particularly interested in natural history to have noticed this fly. Driving along or being a passenger as you're being driven along many country lanes in the UK, you will notice masses of these large and black flies this one is bibio marcy which around april the 23rd variations thereof occur and hatch out in potentially vast numbers there can be huge clouds of them almost with the long legs hanging below the slow flyers and they tend to hover a lot around hedgerows and you will have undoubtedly noticed masses of these flies. Despite the huge decline in invertebrates and insects over the last few decades, a decline which is certainly undoubted, there's been a massive decline in the flies hitting the car windscreen on any lengthy journey. But the Bibionidae, of which there are numerous species, seem to be doing okay. These two are certainly doing okay and are probably quite enjoying the experience if flies are capable of enjoying copulation. But this is very much a fly of mid to late April. And there are a number now taken to the wing here that Loudwood enjoying this beautiful sunshine and the lack of breeze. If I was to move again 50 yards to the top of the hill here, there wouldn't be any flying. Flight is almost impossible. You may well be able to make out the dancing flight. A rather lazy flight though of masses of Bibio Marcy. There are a number of very similar species and there could be another one or two species tucked in with the numbers that are dancing around on this sheltered edge of woodland. It is an incredibly distinctive group of flies, largely two sizes, different species, fitting into both sizes, small and large almost. But they're quite good to identify. Some of the females are a mix of bright, almost pillar box scarlet and black. Quite beautiful things and very distinctive flies and they're not too difficult to get to species and pretty much all of them can be done from good quality photographs. No need for your scalpel and your microscope in the case of Bibios. But the vast majority, 
that you'll ever notice of Bibio Marcy. A very distinctive fly. See with those long legs hanging down. Vast numbers you'll see dancing around the tops of roadside hedgerows, especially on what's a cracking spring day. As with many flies, there's a very easy and detectable difference between the sexes. The male here is on the right and the female is on the left. And if you look at the head of the male, you'll see that that head is virtually comprised 100% of two very large eyes. And the female has greatly reduced eyes. In Bibianidae, these extremes and differences between the two sexes it's probably one of the most pronounced, but most species of flies, whatever family, will show the differences in eye size. We're not buzzing and flying around, almost hovering like. They do a lot of sitting on vegetation, on grass, on tree trunks. And so they're easily disturbed. They'll often copulate like this while resting on paths. They don't care where they do it, really. And with the number of Bibionidae that will be flying over the next few weeks, they've hardly got room to be fussy where they do it. So here's an answer to something you've probably never asked yourself when you've been riding along in the car and you've seen all these flies if you've ever wondered what those flies are then the majority of them are Bibio Marcy often called the St Mark's fly now you can see on this male those long hind legs they're the legs that you see dangling, or predominantly those legs. They're double or three times the length of pairs one and two further up the body. A very distinctive group of flies, Bibi and Ede. I love Bibi and Ede. I got into them quite a lot a couple of years ago we have take off the larva develop in the soil if I remember right and you get mass hatchings of Bibi and Ede this one doesn't know or doesn't look as though it knows its right leg from its left wing but it's having a good clean so this may well have hatched out this morning and it's sorting itself out, getting everything ready before going up and away. It's having quite a tussle with itself. I've never seen one do this, but there again, I've never sat and watched one. Took photos of them, yes, when they've been resting, but never seen this. You see, that's the great thing about natural history. There is always something to find out, something to learn, something to see for the first time. No matter what it is, whether you're really keenly interested in something or not. And diptera are severely neglected in Nottinghamshire. Fabulous here. A fabulous piece of habitat that's been created through just leaving a field to go fallow. This is one of three sites that Jim Meanley, who farms in Ecrian Village, has that's 
been left like this. This is the southern edge of what I call the Loundwood Annex. Loundwood itself is just at the back of you and this is a separate piece of Bluebell Woodland. And a few years ago Jim left this south facing hillside to develop a fauna and flora of its own. And what a remarkable place and habitat it's produced. It's amazing how quickly nature will take back the control of land once it stops being farmed and this up until a few years ago was cropped. Now it's a fantastic woodland edge, brambles developing, whole range of coarse grasses and then later in the summer this is a swathe of purple knapweed flowers that creates a fabulous nectar source for tens of thousands of insects. This is one of those places where farming has put back some of what it took out of the British countryside over the years.